Keep the kids at home, Jew rabbi. We won't kill them, we'll just maim them for life as a sign of what happens to inward lovers. Can you imagine, as a dad, as a parent, can you imagine laying in bed with your wife and what your wife said? Honey, I know we believe in this, but can you imagine the fear that these people had that stood up to listen to Martin Luther King? They got on buses. Some of these people had the same threats to them. You're not going there. These people and the rabbi took a principal stand against evil. Would you? Would you? Are you now? Is there evil among us now? Would you risk your life, your fortune, and your sacred honor? Rabbi Silverman did. These people did. Here's how he did it. He was sworn in as a deputy sheriff. He purchased a snub nose revolver, 38. He took daily target practice, carried a gun for the protection of his family as it is your right to do. He took his children to school and picked them up every day. Never missed a day of school. That is integrity. That is honor. Rabbi Silverman said, quote, I have been called an N-word lover. This is true. I love Negroes and those who are yellow and brown and white. Isn't this what religion teaches? Yes, it is, Rabbi. Yes, it is. The Negro is my brother, a child of God created in the divine image. Judaism and Christianity must take a stand for a moral principle, for human rights and dignity, or be labeled as a pious fraud. What is at stake here is not whether our public school will be integrated. The question is, to what extent are we going to activate the principles of democracy and the American way of life? To what extent are we going to live by our faith? America, that's one of the messages next week at 828, step of the Lincoln Memorial. To what extent are you going to live your faith? Can we become a country again that will stand for our enemy if they happen to be right? I could easily have not told you the Rabbi Silverman because he was, he was into social justice. So why would I tell you that? Because he's right. He's right. Can we become those kind of people again? where we tell the truth, even at our own expense, even if it hurts our argument. We tell the truth. I believe yes. We've been those people. We've been these people. But we've also been... We've also been these people. We've been these people. We've been this guy. I'm going to tell you a story next that I don't, I don't know how history leaves this story out. The bad side of America involving a swimming pool and acid that y you just won't believe you haven't heard. Next. America, we have to learn our past if we're going to be able to handle the future, and it's being so distorted. Um, by progressives, and um, you're being encouraged not to seek out the whole story. Let me share a, a story that should have you run to the real history, not history books that your kids are bringing home from school, but real history. Look for the other parts of the story. It's a story that's out there. I didn't learn it. I don't know if anybody here on the staff had heard it, but nobody on my crew, um, you know, my, my producers had really rem had full recollection of this story. It should chill you to the bone. Happened in Monson at the Motor Lodge in, um, at, in St. Augustine, Florida, the year 1964. Remember the sit-ins? Everybody was having sit-ins. Well, there was a group of white and black protesters who jumped into an all-white pool at the motel to stage a swim-in, just like the sit-ins at the counters. Well, that was unwelcome. And when the well unwelcome blacks refused to get out of the pool, this man, James Brock, 
who is a man who refused to believe that black, white, brown, whatever, were all brothers and sisters, poured acid into the pool. That is him there pouring acid into the pool. It was known at the time as the splash heard around the world. I'm sorry to say it, I hadn't heard of it. It became a lightning rod for the Civil Rights Act to be passed. That was it. Now, here's where the story gets even more bizarre. Some actually remember Brock in his obituary as the victim. Jimmy Kind, uh, or J uh, Jimmy Kind of caught the uh, brunt of the, uh, uh, of the whole thing. He was a nice guy, said a fellow hotelier and longtime friend. They had to pick a motel, so they picked Jimmy's motel. I always told him that he did a foolish thing. Really, can I, I just say something to you? I mean, I, I, I know I'm making a sweeping generalization here, but nice guys don't dump acid into pools where human beings are swimming. They don't do it when fish are swimming in it. That's not foolish. That's psychotic. That is rage and hate. It's not that he's remembered as a nice guy by some, or excused by some. It's the fact that Jimmy never spent one day in jail. Not one. Now let me ask you something. Do you know how you felt with the Black Panthers getting off scot-free in the voter intimidation case? Multiply that by a billion and you can begin to understand where the distrust of the United States government or the law might come from for, 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 for some Americans. I mean, if how could they possibly receive justice when this guy didn't have to pay for dumping acid into a swimming pool? If that's not a horror show, I don't know what is. Look, I grew up in Mount Vernon, Washington, a town of, I think it was 20,000 people. I never saw anything like this as a kid. I never heard these stories. I, I mean, you know, and uh, people like me, that we just all got along, have a hard time understanding. But we, we need to learn our own history so we can understand each other, good and bad. Back in a minute. I have said many times, and I truly believe it, America is the greatest nation in the history of all humankind. But the more I do research on America, the more I find the dark, dark moments of our history. And the more I believe we are the greatest nation ever to walk the face of the planet. How do you work that out? We've endured periods of slavery and, op uh, and, um, and oppression. Um, we have images like this of a slave after a brutal whipping. And then even 70 years after the abolition of slavery, the New York Times reports an unimaginable crime in 1935, the lynching of a black man in Florida. And according to the Times, quote, the suspect booked as Reuben Stacy was hanged at the roadside with a roadside tree within sight of the home of Mrs. Marion Jones, 30-year-old mother of three children, who identified him as her assailant. Six deputies were escorting Stacy to a county jail for, um, for safekeeping when six deputies were overpowered by approximately 100 masked men who ran the car off the road. Look at the picture again. I want you to look at the picture. Put it full screen, please. Put it full screen. Look at the little girl there standing, looking up at the lynched man, smiling. It's almost too horrifying to believe. By the way, a subsequent investigation revealed that Stacy, a homeless tenant farmer, had gone to the house just to ask for food. The woman became frightened. She screamed when she saw Stacy's face. We can't jump to conclusions, and we have to be reasonable people. It is up to you now to do your research for yourself. Don't take my word for any of this stuff. Don't take the president's word or Al Sharpton's word or, or your professor's word. None of it. Do your own work. It is your responsibility as a citizen of the United States. You are the key to our country being great or a horror show. It's not the country or the Constitution that did this. It's people, people, individuals. That's why the solution is fix yourself in here. Our manifest destiny is to be a good example. The shining city on the hill is made up of citizens being a good example and be a blessing to the world. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. That's it. That's your destiny. That's what 828 is all about. Next week at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, I will see you there. I will see you there. I sincerely thank you for watching this week. It's been a risky week and we've tried to get it right. Um, 
I don't know if we did, but we tried. Thank you for watching. From New York, have a great weekend. Good night, America.